All right, let's go ahead and get started with chapter 17. As I've been getting used to using Elvera over the last month, life at school has been almost pleasant. Almost. I can ask Connor about TV shows that came on the night before or tell Jessica that I like her new shoes. It's been snowing, just flurries, almost every day. Late one January afternoon, I typed, I hope we have a snow day. No school. Everybody agreed. For once, I got to speak for the class. I can answer questions in class lots better with Elvera to help me. For the first time, instead of pretend grades that teacher would give me, teachers would give me because they weren't quite sure if I knew the answers or not, I got real grades recorded in the teacher's gradebook that are based on actual answers I've given, printed out and everything. But at recess, I still feel alone. It's been too cold to go outside, so we sit in the far corner of the overheated cafeteria until it's time to go back to class. None of the girls gossip with me about some silly thing a boy has said. Nobody promises to call me after school. Nobody asks me to come to a birthday party or sleepover. Not even Rose. Sure, she'll stop and chat for a minute or two, but as soon as Janice or Paula calls her to come and look at a picture on a cell phone, Rose will say, I'll be right back, then skip away as if she's glad she has a reason to cut out on me. I just smile, hope I wasn't drooling, and pretend I didn't notice. After a few minutes of faking it, I push the button for sentence, go back to H5, and Catherine and I roll back down the hall. One afternoon, near the end of January, Mr. Dimming announced in a voice that sounded like he'd been chewing on dry toast, instead of regular class today, I think we'll have a practice round for the Whiz Kids quiz team. Everyone cheered because otherwise we would have had a lesson on the Sahara Desert. Talk about toasty and dry. Every year, our school sends a team to the Whiz Kids competition. The local rounds with teams from elementary schools all around the city and country are held downtown in a hotel. Last year, our school got to, to second place in the whole district. The principal was so proud, she bought pizza for the entire school. Even though the team was only for grades four and five and six. The first place teams from across the state go to Washington DC for the nationals. It's televised and it's a really big deal. Rose scooted her desk closer to mine. I was on the Wiz Kids team last year, she told me. I know, I typed. You're smart. She beamed, then leaned closer. Connor will probably get picked again, too. He's a little hard to handle, but he's really great with trivia. I glanced over. Connor was boasting to his friends about last year's competition. You ought to see the room in the hotel where they hold the contest. Gold chandeliers, rich-looking stuff everywhere, and kids from all over looking smart. But we smoked them all. All but one team, dude, Rodney shouted out good-naturedly. They tore you up, the class hooted. Yeah, but this year we're going to win. Right, Mr. D? We're certainly going to try, Connor, Mr. Dimming replied. The rules have changed slightly, so our team this year will be made up of just grades 5 and 6. This gives us strength because some of you comp competed last year. Now, let's just see how good we are. Let's do a set of sample questions just for fun, shall we? You got prizes, Rodney asked. Not every competition results in a prize, Rodney, Mr. D replied. Yeah, but it's more fun with good stuff at the end, Connor added. Please? Okay, okay. One slightly squished Butterfinger candy from my lunch bag, the teacher said, holding it up. Everybody laughed once more. Chocolate gives you zits, Rose teased Connor. I don't want candy. I want to win. She moved her desk back to her own row. Catherine sat on the other side of me. Do you want to play the practice round with me? With them? She asked. Yes, 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 I typed. Answers A, B, C, D. Easy. She grinned. Okay, easy. Let's see what happens. Mr. Dimming cleared his throat and smiled. Whiz Kids time is my favorite event of the year. He admitted, let's see if we can go all the way this year. The class cheered. I will read the question first, then the choice of the answers, you will write down the correct letter. Does everyone understand? Connor raised his hand, then called out, even before Mr. Dimming noticed him. Don't give us easy ones, Mr. D. I've got brains of steel and a mouth to match, I heard Rose whisper. 
Number one, the teacher began. Which planet is closest to the sun? A, Venus, B, Earth, C, Mercury, D, Mars, E, Jupiter. Baby questions, Connor protested. Please, Connor, silence, Mr. D said sternly. Connor finally shut up. I pushed the letter C on my machine and waited for the next question. Number two, Mr. Dimming continued, how many sides are on a heptagon? A, four, B, six, C, seven, D, eight, or E, nine. I taped, typed in the letter C again. Would the same letter come up twice in a row? Why not? I knew I was right. Question number three, Mr. D said, how long is one regular term for a U.S. representative? A, one year, B, two years, three, oh, sorry, C, three years, D, four years, E, six years. Hmm. That one could be tricky. It seems like the same politicians are on the news all the time, but I typed in B as my answer. Mr. D gave us 50 questions in all. Several were math problems, other had to do with science and grammar. The last question was about geography. In what state would you find the Grand Canyon, he asked. A, California, B, Arizona, C, South Dakota, D, New Mexico, E, Utah. I'd never been there, but I've seen specials in the Travel Channel, and I'm almost positive it's in Arizona. I typed in the letter B, pushed the print button, and Catherine took my paper to the teacher's desk. Melody participated? Mr. Dimming asked as he looked, took the print out. He glanced from me to the paper in his hand. How nice! I didn't like the sound of his voice. He scored the papers while we watched a movie about the pyramids in Egypt. I couldn't help stealing glances at him. Finally, Mr. Dimming looked over his wire-rimmed glasses. I've tallied the results. These are not official tryouts, but the students with very high scores today are Paula, Claire, Rose, and Connor. Connor jumped from his desk and cheered. I knew it. I'm the man. I'm hot. Let me hold a piece that piece of candy. He started up the aisle towards the desk where the Butterfinger lay. Sit down, Connor, the teacher said with exasperation. You did well, but you don't get the candy. Who beat me? Connor seemed amazed. Rose? That's okay. I'll triumph in the real tryouts. I looked over at Rose. She smiled at me, a look of anticipation on her face. Mr. Dimmings was silent for a moment. He scratched his head. Finally, he cleared his throat and said, The winner of today's competition and the winner of the Butterfinger candy with a perfect score is... He paused again, gave his head a shake, and started again. The only person in the class who got every single question is Melody Brooks. Dead silence. No cheers, just looks of disbelief. No fair, Molly blurted out angrily. Melody's got a helper who whispers the answer to her. She must have cheated, Claire added loudly. Catherine jumped out of her chair and stormed over to where Claire and Molly were sitting her new black leather boots clinking sharply on the tiled classroom floor. I did not help her. Did it ever occur to you that she might have some smarts of her own? She can't even sit up by herself, Claire replied, her voice petulant. What your body looks like has nothing to do with how well your brain works. You ought to know that by looking in the mirror. Oh, she got you, Connor said. That got a couple of laughs, but most of the kids were looking around uneasy. No one looked at me. Claire said nothing in reply, and I guess Molly decided to shut up. Catherine returned to where I sat, but the whole thing made me want to crawl under a table and disappear. Mr. Dimmings raised his hand for the class to be silent. Melody, please come up and get your candy bar. He said, I am very proud of you and your efforts today, and your classmates are as well. Let's all give Melody a round of applause. Everyone except Molly and Claire clapped as I rolled slowly to the front of the room. The sound of my chair's motor whirled softly. They could hear the sound of my thumping, they couldn't hear the sound of my thumping heart. 
I figured the teacher offered me the candy to shut up Claire and Molly and to make me feel good that I accidentally got all the questions right. But it was no accident. I knew them all. Every single one. Mr. Dimming placed the candy bar on my tray. Good. At least I wouldn't have to worry about dropping it in front of the class. I rolled back to my place with my head down. I'm so proud of you, and you should be too, Catherine whispered, holding her hand up for me to slap, but I didn't move. Not. I typed. Why not? You beat them all. It took a very long time, but I typed. They think my brain is messed up like the rest of me. I felt like crying. Then we'll just have to study and show them you're, they're wrong, Catherine said, a hint of defi defiance edging her voice. Why? I asked. So you can be on the quiz team, she told me. Never happen. I tapped. Just as Catherine was about to reply, Mr. Dimmings announced that the official tryouts for the quiz team would be held in one week. Many of you scored quite well in the practice round, he said. But remember, you will have to compete against the sixth grade students as well for the real competition. Go home and study. Only the best will be chosen. Like me, Connor yelled. If you qualify, Mr. Dimming, Dimming told him. I'm taking a winning team to Washington, D.C. this year. Class, are you with me? Yeah, they all yelled. I was amazed they'd get excited about studying for anything, but he rallied them like a football coach. Are you willing to study so we can be on television? Oh, yeah. You're going to buy a new suit if we win, Connor blurted out. Mr. Dimming actually laughed. That's a promise. A new suit, maybe blue, with a red satin vest. The whole class broke out in laughter and applause. Then, let's do our very best, Mr. D said. I'm going to create extra cr challenging questions so that we will be stupendously prepared this year. Well, he's already starting with the big vocabulary words, I heard Molly whisper to Claire. Hard questions? Connor whined. Look at it this way, Mr. Dimmings told Connor. If Melody Brooks can win the first round, then my questions must not be difficult enough. We're all going to rally to win the competition. Everybody cheered, except me. Oh, I don't like how that chapter just ended. How could Mr. Dimming say that about Melody? Look, I don't even want to keep reading the book right now, but I got to figure out what happens. I'm hoping, I'm predicting Melody makes it. I hope for her she does. So, prove all of them wrong. <laughs>